Good morning, everyone. How you guys doing? From the front all the way to the back online. We're so glad you're here. And, and this song is saying what Jesus said on the cross. He said right before he gave his last breath, he said this, it is finished. And what he was saying, the full payment for their sin has been paid for so they could be fully forgiven. Now that's a big deal because if anything more than ever we need is a clear conscience. So many of us feel unworthy. We feel like failures. And this is why you look at your past and you look at your last failure and you think that's who you are. But as a believer, it's finished. All you need to do is confess your sins to Jesus. He'll forgive you. He'll cleanse you. He'll give you eternal life. And you could have it right now. And then you could receive forgiveness. You could forgive others. I would even say this. Forgive yourself. Because when you don't realize that you're forgiven, you end up not, al you end up not allowing yourself to progress. Because you start thinking, well, I don't deserve it. Because you're so aware of the wrong you've done that it's blinded you of the great things God has done. And the Bible says if you, for, you confess your sins, he is faithful and, and just to forgive you and cleanse you. Someone receive forgiveness today and a new start. Let go of the guilt trip and allow God to prosper you and give you the abundant life. Let's give God some praise. It's already done. It's already done. You can have a new start today. I'm going to pray, then we'll get into the word. Father, we just thank you. I thank for everyone that's here, and I'm asking you, Lord, to speak through me, Holy Spirit. That it will not be my words, but your words through me. You said that you would give us the words to speak when, Father, it's needed. And I thank you, Lord. I need your help. And right now we open our hearts, not only hear your word, help us to understand it, apply it, receive it so we get the results and the fruit of the seed that's going to be planted in our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So glad to see you here today. I wasn't sure who would come today after Christmas. I'm sure I'm glad you came and leave me, didn't leave me here all alone by myself. But we are worshiping God on this Christmas weekend. Today I want to talk to you about 2022. And this is the title of the message today, Preparing for Greatness in 2022. God wants to do some great things through you in 2022. But I want to define greatness first. Greatness means this. Something is truly great if it has a lasting quality. It's, it's not great if it doesn't last. What I mean by that is you cannot say you have a great marriage if it only lasted three months. That's not great. You can't say you have a great business if it has no longevity to it. That means it was, it's, it's lasted, but it only lasted a year, and then you went bankrupt. It might have been a good business for a while, but it's not a great business because it has no longevity. Even I like to watch boxing and UFC fighting. There's not a great champion that can say, I'm a great champion, that won the belt, and then he loses it or doesn't defend it immediately. You can't say you have a great product if you buy it and say, man, this product's great, and you take it home, and it breaks on you. So something is truly great if it has a lasting quality. True greatness also focuses on others. Something's really great if it has a lot lasting quality, and it focuses on blessing others. That means you could have a business that could be a good business, but it's a great business when it blesses others. And it has some longevity. And also, it helps people connect to eternal life. True greatness is motivated by God's love for people. And is practiced by finding people's greatest needs and doing everything we can to meet them. We, as a church, are in the business, when it's all said and done, we're in the greatest business in the world. Because everything that we do is focused not only on someone's present well-being, but it's also focused on someone's eternal well-being. We are offering 
eternal life. This message is the greatest message in the world. And this is what God is saying. I want to do some great things in your life and in our church this year. How many believe God wants to do some great things in our lives and our church this year? Now, when God thinks about us, he thinks about greatness. He did not make you an accident. You're not an accident. He didn't make you just to ho-hum through life and survive. He created you to do great things. And anytime God is talking to human beings or he's sharing, he's sharing his vision, it's always big. It's always great. And I'm going to share with you some examples. When God made Adam and Eve, he gave them a great worldwide vision. This is what he told them in Genesis 1:28. Then God blessed them. What did God do? Bless them. And he said this, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. This is what God does. He speaks worldwide vision. This is what he says. Fill the whole earth. Govern the whole earth. Reign over everything. This is what God thinks about you. This is what God thought about Adam and Eve. But how were they going to be able to do that? Be fruitful, multiply, succeed, govern, and reign. They were going to be able to do that because of the blessing of God over their lives. Before he told them the grandeur of the vision, he blessed them. What does that mean? When God gives you a big vision, he gives you the power and the ability to accomplish it. The reason they could do what God asked them to do is because he blessed them first. That word bless is a Hebrew word and it's pronounced barak. And it means to bestow good. It means to present a gift or make a deposit. Every single believer that's in this place, God has given you a gift of eternal life. He's given you the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he's made a major deposit in you. Now, he's made a major deposit because he's expecting to do great things in your life. God is a great investor. And when he makes a deposit, he's expecting some return. How many believe that? God wants to do some great things in 2022 through you. Now, this is another example. I just gave an example of Adam and Eve. Fill the whole earth. Govern it. Reign over it. And the second example is God promised Abram. That he would make him a great nation. In Genesis 12, 2, God speaks over a man and he speaks greatness over him. Now what God spoke over Abram, he is now speaking over you. In one of the most richest um, cultures or ethnicities in the world are the Jew Jews. And they're, they're rich and I'll tell you why they're rich, because they know their heritage, and they know their lineage, and they know where they come from, and they know that they're blessed. So since they know that they're blessed, they expect blessing. They not only expect themselves to be blessed, they expect their children to be blessed. They expect it, they speak it, and what do they speak? They speak this exact scripture. This scripture is for you and me. God is prophesying greatness over Abram. And God is saying what I spoke over him. I'm speaking over you, Wayworld Outreach. I'm speaking over you, gentlemen. I'm speaking over this over you. Ladies, expect great things in 2022. In Genesis 12, 2, it says, I will make you into a great nation. I love that. Abram is not self-made. He is God-made. God wants to do something great in your life, in your family. Expect greatness. And then he says this, I will bless you. What if God said this? I will bless you in 2022. That sounds like a rap. I will bless you in 2022. What if God's saying that to you as an individual? 
I will bless you in 2022. Is there anybody that will receive that blessing, that Barak over their lives, that deposit? And it says, I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. Famous? Does God want me to chase fame? No, he's not saying chase fame. I'll make you famous. Now, why would God want to make you famous? So you would make him famous. He wants to show off what he could do with a regular person just like you. Look what I could do with someone that you rejected. Look what I could do with someone that you imprisoned. Look what I could do with someone that you just threw away. You thought they were worthless. And watch me bless you through them. God wants to do something amazing through you. Bless me, Lord. Say with me. I receive your blessing. Make me famous. I want to be famous for Jesus. Because if he could be glorified through my life, people are going to say, what God did for you, he can do for me. Yep, a person like me. I was bound. I was addicted. I was messed up. I was jealous. I couldn't get anything right. But there was a day that Jesus called me and he said, son, I'm going to do deposit something in you that's going to glorify me. And you'll be famous through the testimony that you now have. Share the story what God has done with you. And, and you will be a blessing to others. Isn't that great? It's saying you won't steal from others. You won't be hurting others. You won't be taking advantage of others. You're going to be a blessing to others. That means when you show up, people are going to be happy again. Because when you used to show up, you used to bring drama with you. Arguing with you, violence with you, lying with you, cheating with you, gossip with you. But something happened in your life. You got blessed by the Lord. There was a deposit that you received in your life. And now when you show up, people are excited because now you are a source of blessing. I don't know what happened, man, but before you came into this room, I was depressed. But when, since you came in this room, I just feel like something's been lifted. I'm feeling happy. I got some peace. Why don't you kick back with me? Let's have some coffee. I like this conversation. Now we need some of that more. We need some, how many, we need some blessing like that. And look, it just, look, I will bless you. I will, look, check this out. I will bless those who bless you. So I tell people, just bless me. It'll be good for you. But, but this is crazy. And I will curse those who treat you with contempt. What he's saying basically, if anybody curses you, they'll be cursed. But God is saying, I got your back. I'm not going to bless you, but I'm going to make sure that they can't curse you. And whatever they say about you that's not right will bounce off of you and land on them. I'm rubber. You're glue. Whatever you say bounces off of me and sticks to you. That's the scripture that they got that from right there. That nursery rhyme. Stop trying to defend yourself and getting off your mission of greatness. Your mission of greatness is not arguing with people. Your mission of greatness is not to be the, the uh, go on Facebook and cuss everybody out by accident and uh, not mentioning names, but you know who you are. That's not your mission. Your mission is to do, allow God to do great things through you. Your mission is to bless others. Your mission, come on, your mission is to heal others. Your mission is to set people free. Your mission is to encourage others. Your mission is to love some people. Someone say, I'm blessed. And look what it says finally. This is what God's saying over a man named Abram. All the families on the earth will be blessed through you. Get this. This is a great vision. What I'm going to do through you, Abram, I know you, you think you're living in the backwoods. But I'm going to do something so magnificent and grand in your life that through you, every single family on the earth will have an opportunity to be blessed. What happened with Abram? How did that happen? 
Well, through the lineage of Abraham is where Jesus came. Jesus was a great, 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 great grandson of Abram. The savior of the world came through his bloodline. God gave him this dream or God gave him this prophetic word when he was 90 some years old. He was a senior citizen that was really senior. He didn't have a kid yet. And God said, don't you worry about it. There's going to be nations that come out of you. They said, well, how can you use a man like me? That's what I told you. I'm going to make you famous. A 90-year-old, a 100-year-old wife is going to give birth to a child. It's going to be a miracle. They're going to know you couldn't do it. You tried for 90 years, but they had something happen. It was a blessing that God put over Abraham that changed his destiny, that changed his productivity, that changed his life. God is saying they're not going to be able to recognize what I've done in your life. I'm blessing you right now for 2022. Get ready for greatness this next year. Praise the Lord. You might be saying, Pastor, that's all nice for Abram, but what about me? I mean, did, is God saying that about me, that he'll bless me and I'll bless others? He'll make me famous. And anybody that messes with me, you'll take care of them. Look what he says. I'm going to tell you this. What the, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Every promise that God gave Abram, every blessing he spoke over him is yours in Christ. It's time for you to get your identity back. You are not, come on, you are not in poverty. You are not depressed. You are not broke. You are not lonely. You are not broken. You are not a failure. You are a child of God, which qualifies you for the full inheritance. Somebody got to believe that God has deposited greatness in you. Look what it says in Galatians 3.29. And now that we are Christ, check this out. And now that we are Christ, and now that we belong to Christ, what does that mean? There are those that belong to Christ, and there are those that don't belong to Christ. But now that the, the ones that have dedicated their life to Christ, placed their faith in Christ, that have been born again, that are saying, I'm done with my old life. I'm tired of belonging to the devil. I'm tired of belonging to the drugs. I'm tired of belonging to the gangs. I'm tired of belonging to the poor. I'm tired of belonging to the lies. I'm done. I belong to Christ now. Who do you belong? Who? Who do you? Well, I don't even want to go. Say. That's a good answer. It was Jesus. I, I saw that. Who do you belong to? Jesus. All right, one more time. Who do you belong to? Jesus. All right, there you go. We got it. I'm Christ. But look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Now that you, now that you, no. now that we are Christ, we are the true descendants of Abraham. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Like. I'm a descendant of that man that was supremely blessed. That man that would go to war. He went to war against armies with 300 of his servants and took them all out. You know why? It wasn't that he was stronger than them. It was the one that was representing the one that blessed them was strong. See, this covenant, he went into war with a covenant. He went into war with a promise. Those that curse me will be cursed. So you can't come against me. No weapon formed against me will, will prosper. I know I only got 300 and you got 30,000, but that don't matter. I got God by my side and I got a promise that I'm standing on. I'm a descendant of Abraham. That means that promise that he made him belongs to me. Look at this. Says. And all of God's promises to him belong to us. Oh, Lord, you got to get this. You got to start claiming your own inheritance. There's one thing about having an inheritance and knowing you got it, and, but, and having an inheritance and, don't, and not even know you got it. Some of us are walking in defeat 
You're walking in failure. You're walking in depression. You're fearful because you don't know the blessing that God has spoken over your life. I am blessed. So I say, I'm blessed. So God's thinking big, right? He tells, he tells Adam and Eve, big. Fill all the earth. Govern the whole thing. Reign over it. Rule. Whoa. He tells Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you into a great nation. Everyone that blesses you will be blessed. Those that curse you will be in trouble. They'll be cursed. And through you, Abram, all the families on the earth will be blessed. And then he goes on to say, if you belong to Christ, you qualify for the blessing too. But and then he speaks to his disciples and he says, he's given big vision. See, God has not only given them vision, but he's given us big vision. God has given us truly great and worldwide vision and mission. It's called the Great Commission. So God doesn't, like, lower the vision for us. He makes it huge. And this is the greatest vision of all, that we'd be able to impact someone's eternal life through our message and lifestyle. And Mark 16, 15, look what he says to us. And he told them, go into all the world. Go where? Go where? How many know that's a big vision? Like affect the whole world. Turn the world upside down. Take ownership of this upside down broken world and just let them know I'm here on a call from God. This neighborhood's going to change. This city's going to change. This family's going to change because God has given me a message. He's blessed me to bring about change. So I say take ownership. Go into all the world and preach the good news to any, everyone. And anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. That's powerful. So I'm going to give you a message that's so powerful that if they believe it, they'll be saved. You know what that means? They'll be set free from their addiction. They'll be forgiven of everyone in their sin. Bam. They'll receive eternal life. Bam. They'll be made into a new person. Bam. I will back up the message with my power if you would just understand I've given you a worldwide message. You don't need no prophet to tell you that you're going to go to the nations. All you got to know is read this scripture. And God is saying, I put a worldwide anointing on you. Carry it. Take ownership and use it. Someone say, use it. And look what it says in verse 17. Mark 16, 17. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in new tongues. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. That sounds like being a blessing. That you will be able to say, Pastor, cast out demons? Yes. Well, Pastor, how do you cast out demons? Like this. Come out in the name of Jesus. Well, Pastor, will that work? Yes, it'll work because you're blessed to do it. That means someone could be bound by a spirit of torment. They could be bound by a spirit of poverty. They could be bound by a spirit of addiction. They could be bound by a spirit of torment. And you'll be able to say, in the name of Jesus, I command this spirit of depression to leave them now. In the name of Jesus, go! Really? It's part of your inheritance. It's a promise. You know why? I'll tell you. You know why you don't see it? Because you don't know you could do it. That's all. How is someone to get healed if you never lay your hands on a sick person? Well, what if they don't get healed? They'll remain sick. What harm did you do? Be careful that you're not more worried about your ego than your purpose. You know why some of us can't do great things? You're more concerned about looking dumb than accomplishing what God called you to do. There's a time that you got to step out and just walk on water. And if you drown, you drown. But Jesus will lift you up and say, son, next time we'll walk a little better. Just keep your eyes on me. But at least you did what I asked you to do. Come, let's walk. Christians. We are powerful. 
You know why you're powerful? Because the creator of the universe lives in you. He's not only blessed you, he's moved in. You got to help somebody here. So how do we prepare for greatness for 2022? First, first thing, get a vision for greatness and believe it can happen. Like, get a vision that God will do great things in your life. Everything that Jesus did on earth was just the beginning. Look in Acts 1.1. It says, in my first book I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach. Everything that Jesus did was just the beginning of what he did and he taught. The, the sequel of all of this is through you and I. He's still teaching. He's still doing. He's still raising the dead. He's still setting people free. He's still giving eternal life. He's still making people new. He's still forgiving sins. But this is how he does it. He does it through a message that we deliver through every single one of us. We bring hope. We bring the good news. We bring salvation. God is still working through Jesus Christ in you. You know what the problem is? We think too small, and this is what we also think. Maybe them, not me. You don't know the family I came from. I'm not talking about the family you came from. I'm talking about the spiritual family you came from. You came from Jesus. You came from the, you're, you're part of the descendants of Abraham. What nationality? I think I'm Jew after this service. Because I got some right Jewish blood working through me. Because of the pro I'm a descendant of Abraham, and if he's blessed, and he's walking that kind of power, and that's what same power I'm walking in, because Jesus restored that same promise in my life, so I'm going to start taking on as my identity, and I'm going to start walking in it. I'm a pool, a source of blessing. So Jesus has a vision for every believer, has a, a vision of greatness for every believer. Jesus had to even speak to his disciples to expand their thinking. Because he already knew if they didn't expect to do big, they wouldn't. He knew they would be tempted that after Jesus left, they would be thinking, our best days are behind us. So before he ascends to the Father, Jesus has a private meeting with his disciples and he starts speaking greatness over them. And what he was saying, you haven't seen nothing yet. I don't even say it like that, but I, feel, I would have said it like that. I got a little hood in me. I would have said it like, just like, you haven't seen nothing yet. But look what he says in John 14, 12. Someone say, this scripture speaking about me. Say it with me. This scripture speaking about me. I, this is Jesus. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me, who's anyone? I'm one of those anyones. I'm a believer in him. Will do the same works I've done. What I did, you'll do. Because it's the same spirit. It's the same power source. It's the same authority. It's the same name. I've done, and even greater works, because I'm going to be with the Father. Greater works? Get? What? Why greater works? I want you to uh, see, take this out. When Jesus was on earth, he was limited. Because he could only be in one place at a time. He goes, but when I go, I'm going to be everywhere. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and then I'm going to send my spirit. And the same spirit that's doing miracles in me is going to live in every single believer. So Jesus won't just be in Jerusalem. He'll be in San Bernardino. He'll be at Walmart. He'll be at the donut shop. He'll be at Starbucks because that same Jesus, that same spirit is now in you. What he's saying, I'll be able to do greater things through you because my spirit will be in every single believer. Say with me, Jesus, do great things. Through me. 
Whew, I love the sequels. I just went to see Spider-Man. Pretty good movie. Okay. After we saw the movie, I mean, those special effects are just crazy. But after we saw the movie, my daughter said, Dad, don't get up yet. We're going to show something. So, so we, we sit there, people are walking out, there's not, there, but there's a group staying because they know that they're going to give a picture of what's coming. That's called a sequel. So we waited like five minutes or something like that, just going through all the credits, and then all of a sudden the sequel came. And we're, oh, Spider-Man ain't done yet. <laughs> he coming back. And when he come back, it's going to be better than the first one. And the second one, the third one, the fifth one, the tenth one, whatever that is right now. But then my daughter, after we're done with that, I go, let's go. She goes, it's not over yet. So and then they showed another one. Some of you guys see, she almost left too early. Because you didn't see the third, second one. So after it was all said and done, they show another one. Another sequel about a metaverse thing. Oh, crazy stuff happening. All I'm saying, Jesus just had a meeting like that. The credits are running. And what he's saying, come on, get ready, because I'm ready to do my greatest work through my church. You guys have not seen anything yet. My sequel is in my people. Someone said, get a vision. And number two, so how do we prepare? Number one. Get a vision of greatness and believe it can happen. Someone say, believe it can happen. And number two, get instructions and follow it. You know, in 2022, you want to see a great life? It's going to require great obedience. Lord, I, I want the promise. I know. But you got to be leadable. I'll lead you to greatness. With every great vision comes clear instructions. I'll say it again. With every great vision comes what? Clear instructions. And this is what Jesus did. After he resurrects from the dead, he's having a meeting with his disciples for 40 days. You know what happens? Jesus resurrects from the dead, stays 40 days, and does intense training giving them final instructions so that the greatness he spoke over them would actually be realized. So I got to believe in the vision, but I also got to follow instructions. We're going to get opportunity to follow instructions. And what's really important, not only follow instructions, expose yourself to more instructions. Partial instructions don't lead to full victories. Acts 1, 2, it says, until the day he was taken up into heaven, after giving his chosen apostles further instructions, what did he give his apostles, what? Through the Holy Spirit, during the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive, and he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Put yourself this year, even before the year ends, in a place where you're exposing yourself to the instructions. Because in the instructions is your key to victory in everything that you do. Do you know why some Christians are not living powerful lives? This is why. They know Jesus as a Savior, but they have not made him their Lord. They want to get God's results, but they want to continue living however they want to live. And if you want to continue living the way you live, you're going to keep on getting the results you been getting. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> I come from the, from the rap industry. No, I was kidding. <laughs> God has given us, an, someone said, God's given us the invitation to come to him for instructions. And every day he says, come to me before you start your day and get some instructions. Spend time in the word. Every Sunday in 2022, make a decision. I'm going to come to church every single Sunday because I got to get the instructions. 
This, son, this Wednesday, we're going to have Prophet Rob Sanchez giving instructions, prophetic words from God. I would come and get some instructions and get some prophetic words about my future. This Friday, someone say this Friday. Friday. We're going to have our, we're going to start off the new year in the house of God. But it's going to start at 7 o'clock. We're going to go, like, we're going to do New York time. Like, we're going to act like we're in New York. We're at 7, but it's really 10 over there. But we're going to do right here. We're going to be here in the house of God. You don't need to be at the club. You don't need to be at Disneyland. You don't need to be uh, uh, in Las Vegas. You don't need to be in your family's house. You need to be in God's house. And this year, I'm going to end this right, and I'm going to start it right in the house of God. We got Chris Webb. He, he's a spoken word artist. He's an Emmy winner. He's going to be, he, I would come and bring somebody. Anybody heard Chris Webb? I mean, he'll put chills to you. The word that he's going to bring is going to be dynamite. They're going to give you the word for the year. It's going to be awesome this year. Come on. Get ready. Friday at 7 o'clock. Expose yourself to the word. Look what it says here. In Isaiah 55, 3, it says, this is what God says. Listen now, my people, and come to me. And he says it again. Come to me. Come to me. Listen. Now. Hear me speak. Listen to my word. Come to church. Come to Holy Warriors. Come to your devotion time. Join a P12 small group. Come to the ladies' meetings. Come to the Bible studies. Come, and I'm going to give you some instruction. Look what it says. Listen, my people. Come to me. Come to me, and you will have life. And you will have what? Life. Now, now this word life in the in the Hebrew is pronounced ha ya. It, it's not hala, it's ha ya. Someone say ha ya. I'm going ha ya. <laughs> it means this. Come to me and I'll give you ha ya. You give me your drugs, I'll give you some higher. You give me your depression, I'll give you some higher. You give me, come on, you give me your 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 failures and I'll give you some higher. Give me your life. Let's make an exchange. I'll give you some higher. It means a prosperous life. How many want that? Eternal life. He's the only source of higher. Restoration from si health, restoration of health from sickness. Restoration from discouragement. Restoration from failure. Restoration from weaknesses. This is what he's saying. The word higher means I'm going to cause you to grow. I'm going to help you recover. I'm going to make you whole. How many want some higher? I'll prosper you. I'll help you grow. I'll help you recover. I will set you free. I will give you a new life. Today you could give up your whole home. Come on, life. You could give up your substandard life. You could give up your drug life. You could give up, come on, your lost life. You could give up your dark life. And you could receive the life that God offers, eternal life. You could get some higher today. I love it. So number three. So number two is get instructions to follow. Get instructions to what? And number three. Seek for the filling of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Prepare. So, number one, we're saying get a vision. I would say this. Prepare your mind to receive something great. Get your thinking bigger. Number two, follow God's instructions. Get instructions, follow it. I would say prepare your heart to obey God. That this year I'm going to obey God. I, I, I ran into something, and I'm getting set free to, right now from an addiction. And... And say, Pastor, you're addicted? Yeah, I am. Because whatever you give yourself to, you become addicted. I got addicted. So this is what happened. I had a dream the other night. And God, I, I was, I, there was like two pools. It was like maybe three or four pools, but they were the size of a like jacuzzi. And I'm ready to step in this pool. The water looks super clear. As I'm stepping into the water, I hear the Holy Spirit tell me that pool is illegal. You're not supposed to step in that pool. It's not allowed in my kingdom, and you're stepping into it. It's contaminated. So when I stepped into it, I stepped into it, I could feel like what's in it. What's, what's in it is, is just vile. It's dirty. It's, it's contaminated. And I could feel as I'm stepping in it, it's, it's actually contaminating me. And then he goes, there's another pool. And I looked at it. It looked the same. But one was contaminated, one wasn't. He goes, that one 
is legal. You could step in that one, and that one has clean, fresh water that will refresh you, strengthen you, make you whole. It's the word of God. God's word is water. So I, go, so I woke up in the morning. I go, God, what is that dirty pool? And you know what he told me? He goes, it's your social media. It's your YouTube. I go, nah, you didn't say YouTube. Now, for you, YouTube might not be nothing. You might just use it for spirit, like worship. Hallelujah, word. That's how you use it. You're good. Not me. I was using it to watch UFC cussing. I'd watch some nonsense. All of a sudden, I'm watching a cab driver kick somebody out of his car. Like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what you get. I started watching people, like uh, court sentences. They're, they're sentencing right now. He's going to get life in prison. Look how he's going to respond. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm crying. I'm, and this is what happened. And God says, you're in a contaminated pool. It's not blessing you. Get out. So I woke up in the morning and, no, the next morning, and I deleted YouTube. I deleted my Netflix. You don't have to, I'm just that I did it. Because I know me. And I'm not going to get my, uh, but I said, leave me not in temptation. I know I'm addicted. You know how I know I was addicted? When I got rid of YouTube. Because when I got rid of it, I didn't know what to do. Because I like I, all that time I was spending on it, like right before I go to bed, I usually go just a little earlier than everybody else, so I could just get caught up on the UFC and all the nonsense about that cab driver. Let's make sure he kicks that person out too. <laughs> but in between there was cuss words. In, the, in between there was lust. In between there was all kinds of images. I was in a contaminated pool, and I knew I was addicted because because at that point, right when that time came, this is what happened. I didn't know what to do. And the Holy Spirit told me, read a Christian book. Read the Bible. What a great idea. <laughs> so Kindle, I got Kindle. Kindle told me they're so proud of me. Because today I just got a notice. They said six days straight you've been reading Kindle. You've been 70 weeks straight that you've actually lit, read something, but six days straight, you've broken your own record. I've never felt so encouraged <laughs> since my mom left. I'm just like, thank you, Kendall. I'm doing good, huh? You're doing very good. It's been six days since I shut down the YouTube that I'm able to, come on, get some better content. And what God is saying, come on, seek my presence, seek my spirit, because you need my power to do the great things I want to do in your life. But there's going to be some things that you're going to have to let go of so you seek after God. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a 21-day fast. Seeking after the Holy Spirit. Join Holy Warriors. I guarantee, I dare you. It will change your life forever. It's going to be crazy. We're gonna, you're going to sign a contract, a 30-day contract with the Lord. It's going to be crazy. Someone say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Let's read this last verse. Acts 1, 4 and 8 says this. Once when he was eating with them, just after his resurrection was dead, he's having a final meeting with them. He commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before. John baptized you with water, but just a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit is a necessity. Don't you leave Jerusalem and go out there and start preaching and making disciples and trying to cast out demons with my, without my spirit. What makes you powerful is the one that's in you. Some of us are failing 
because you're trusting too much in your own discipline and your own ability. We need the power of the Holy Spirit so we can live moral lives, so we can live overcoming lives. It's, it's he that is in me that's greater than everything I'm facing out there. See, Jesus is the one that keeps me moral. Jesus is the one that sanctifies me. Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit in me. The Spirit of Jesus that's, that's speaking to me in a dream that's saying, come on, stop touching that illegal stuff. I got a plan for your life, but you need me more than you need that YouTube. You need me more than you need that relationship. Why don't you give me some time and let me fill you with my power so I can do some great things in your life. Look what he says in verse 8. Acts 1a says, but you will receive power. Receive what? Power. That word power is, means, is pronounced dynamis, and it means power to perform miracles, moral power, supernatural ability, influence, supernatural provision, supernatural growth, and supernatural strength. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Mission. The greatest thing you could ever do is get filled with God's presence, his spirit, and go out there and do some greatness in your business, in your home, in our city. This year we're going to do some greatness in Jesus' name. We have 60,000 homes in San Bernardino. We're going to knock on every single one of those doors and present the gospel to every single business, every single entity, every single government entity, every single, every single school. They're going to hear the gospel from the way we're allowed. Everyone's going to hear the gospel this year. This year we're going to open a church in Compton, right? We're getting a vision. Right now, right now, there's hardly any churches open in Compton. We're going to open an on-fire Christian church full of the Holy Spirit in Compton this year. This year, we're going to build 1,800 leaders. And by the time we're done, we're going to have 2,000 growth groups, power 12 groups. We're going to do some great things this year. This year, we're going to do some great things in Jesus. And this year, we're believing over 10,000 souls will commit their lives to Jesus and go through our discipleship process. How many believe that God's going to do some great things? This year, we want to build. We want to build a, a, a program for single moms and, and children for them to be godly and become God-sufficient. Not self-sufficient, God-sufficient. That they'll be able to get off their welfare checks and raise their kids to be godly men and godly women. This year, come on, we're moving forward. We're doing missionary work. This year is going to be the greatest year that we've ever had, 2022. Pastor Robert, can you close us out, please? Let's give the Lord a hand. Let's all stand up. Are you guys ready for some greatness in your life? Yeah. In you. I'm going to we're going to dispense in just a second. We want to make sure we give an opportunity for everyone to respond. There's going to be three responses. One, you, you're like me. You got to give up something that's stopping you from seeking after the Lord. It's in your way. You have to give it up today. I've confessed my sins. So, Pastor, why you confess all? Because I'm real. When I go through stuff, I let you know. I got no secrets. I'm just like you. I'm fighting this fight just like you. Amen. Come on. Number two, some of, one of, some of you guys need to give your life to Jesus. You're not saved. You don't have eternal life. If you were to die right now, this might be your last opportunity. You're not going to heaven. You've not received. You've not come to Jesus. God said, come to me. I'll give you higher. I'll give you eternal life. I'll give you a new beginning. I'll forgive you of your sins. Come to me. I'm the only way to the Father. Come to me. And you're waiting, waiting, waiting for what? Today's your day. In the third group, there's some of you need to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. That today, Sam, I want to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. I want to speak in tongues for the first time in my life. We're believing that could happen today. Pastor Robert, close this out, please. I'm going to receive that word today. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Let's make a declaration really quick for the Abraham Covenant. What you just learned today was called the Abraham Covenant. You need to study that like there's no tomorrow. How many would raise your hands? You know what, Pastor? I'm going to study the Abraham Covenant. Raise your hand if you want it. It's a covenant. We're the heirs of Abraham and Christ. We're the heirs. So that covenant that was listed there in Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 3, that's called the Abraham, that's a covenant. Satan cannot go through a covenant. But we have to break the covenant we've had 
with the devil. Ties we've had with the enemy, we need to break them. So every head by every eyes closed, let's break that covenant with the enemy. Let's receive the Abraham covenant. Say, Jesus, I break every covenant that I've had with the devil. I break every tie that I've had with the devil. And I receive my Abraham covenant. I receive the blessings. Poverty is getting broken right now in Jesus' name. Broken right now. Poverty is being broken in the name of Jesus. Raise of hands, be honest. You are living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. And you're barely making it financially. Raise your hand. You're barely making it. You do not have enough money to do this. Raise your hand right now. God's going to break right now. We break it in the name of Jesus. I want you to say the spirit of poverty. You are broken over my life. I receive my Abraham covenant. It is broken in the name of Jesus. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. You've been trying to go forward, but a spirit of poverty. That's not you. That's not your identity. You're a child of the king. His name is Jesus. Now, here it goes. Everybody looking up here, last thing. If you're saying, Pastor, I got some things I need to get rid of. Pastor Mark gave an example of YouTube. It was an addiction, something that I love what he said. It was illegal. Cuss words are illegal in heaven. When he said that, it's like it just something sparked in my brain. That's illegal. There's no Instagram. It, that stuff that we're living, it's illegal. Adultery, fornication, that's illegal in the kingdom of heaven. So you say, man, I got some things I need to get rid of. I'm addicted here. I'm jumping into this pool. I'm watching this. I'm listening to that. And I need to be done with that. It's illegal in the kingdom of heaven. So when I say three, that's going to be part of you. I want to be done with that. If it's smoking, that's illegal in the kingdom of heaven. Smoking marijuana, that's illegal in the kingdom of heaven. Smoking cocaine, that's illegal in the kingdom. Getting drunk with alcohol, that's illegal in heaven. It's illegal. We can't do it. God wants to set you free today. So Pastor being very aggressive, yeah, because the devil is very aggressive. The devil is very aggressive. Some of us right now, he already has your children, and they're bound right now. How many right now you have kids, and they're drinking alcohol and getting drunk and partying? Raise your hand. They're being bound by the devil. Raise your hand. I see you, Mama. Your kids are being, they're being bound. It's going to get broken right now. How, how does it get broken? When you and I surrender as a parent 100%. And then we make prayers and declarations like this, and your son now gets bound and your daughter gets bound by the Holy Spirit. I want my kids bound and arrested. By, I want them to be, be possessed with the Holy Spirit, taken over by the Holy Ghost. So here it goes. I'm going to count to three. Number one, you're saying, I got some things I want Jesus to set me free from. Or maybe you want to stand in the gap. I got a kid that's bound. He's struggling. I want you to raise your hands when I count to three. Here's the last group. If you were to die today, where are you going? Where are you going? Tomorrow's not promised. Over the weekend, it broke my heart on Christmas Eve. I was watching the news, little girl, 14 years old, was in Burlington Coat Factory trying on clothes. You guys hear that in the news? You guys see that? 14 years old. She was in Hollywood. Christmas Eve, 14-year-old girl. She's trying on clothes. Bullets start flying at Burlington Coat Factory. It hits this 14-year-old girl. She dies. Rush her to the hospital. She's dead. She died right there at a Burlington Coat Factory on Christmas Eve trying on clothes. And it messed my day up Christmas Eve when I heard that. If I would have told that parent, hey, your daughter's going to die today in that, in that just trying on clothes. I was just thinking, where was she going? Was she trying on clothes to go to a party? 
What if that little 14 year girl trying on clothes? Maybe mama said, hey, go pick out some clothes for Christmas. That little 14 year old girl, she went on to eternity. So pastor, why are you saying all this right now? Because tomorrow's not promised. You're not promised the next half an hour. You're not promised the next 45 minutes. This might be the last time you hear the gospel. We've had several services. People leave. They don't see the next 24 hours. It's happened because when a crowd decides, it, it, anything can happen. So here it goes. I'm going to count to three. You say, Pastor, I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I want to make sure if I die today, I'm going straight to heaven. I want Jesus. Or two, Pastor. I got some things that I'm addicted to. I, I want to be totally free. Or I got my kids. They're bound right now. I want my kids to be free. Raise your hands when I count the three all across this auditorium. One, don't let nothing hold your hand down. You want Jesus. You want to be set free. Raise your hands when I say three. One, two, three. Raise your hands right now. I want to be free. I want Jesus. I want that addiction to be broken. I want my kids' addictions to be broken. I want freedom. I want Jesus. There it goes. There it goes. All those who just raise your hands, I want you to run to the run to the front. Come over here and join us. Run to the front. We're going to pray for you. Run, 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 run. Come, 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 come. your freedom up here. Come get it. Come get it. Yes. This is your day. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54 people. 54 people that are saying this. 54 people are saying this. I want to be free from any addiction. I want Jesus in my life. I want to become a disciple, and my kids are bound. I know we mentioned a few things for your kids to be set free by the power of God. Everybody here in the front, dedicate to Jesus. Give Jesus this next 12 months. Watch him radically transform your life. Watch him radically transform your children and grandkids. Radically transform you. Give him 12 months. We got Wednesday. We got Friday. Like Pat, expose yourself to the word. We got holy warriors. It's going to get nuts here on January 11th. It's going to get crazy. It's a contract we're going to sign. It's going to get, how many remember holy warriors back in the day? It's going to get crazy. Everyone bother to close their eyes. I know we're taking longer, but we had to. Denny's Kuwait, in and out Kuwait. The Raider game starts at 1. That Kuwait, that's coming up. I know. I know my sports. Kansas City Chiefs, I know they're coming up pretty soon. This is more important than all of that. We took a little longer right now because people need salvation. Abraham Covenant, I'm telling you, read that thing all week long. Read it. Abraham Covenant, look it up. Google it. Abraham Covenant, read it. Tell him it's going to change your life. Every head bow, every eyes closed. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I ask forgiveness. I repent. Of all the wrong that I've done. Jesus, forgive me. I repent. Jesus, fill me. I make you the Lord of my life. Now raise your hands all across this auditorium to be filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. Say, I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
Some of you guys have been praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You're getting it right now. You're going to, one of the evidence is speaking in tongues. Some of you guys are going to speak in tongues right now for the first time. Holy Spirit, fall right now in this auditorium. Holy Spirit, fall over the airwaves. People watching us from home and uh, at, 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 at hospitals, at workplaces, driving trucks, driving cars. Holy Spirit, fall on us right now. There it goes. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There it goes. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There it goes, sweetie. You got it. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1. We thank you. Power will come upon us when we're baptized of the Holy Ghost. Boldness to be a witness. We thank you. Power. Do them as power right now. We receive the baptism. Say, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. There it goes. 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 There it goes, there it goes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give Jesus a shout. This is good. Everybody that came up, hang out for a few minutes. We want to exchange information with you, get you to your next step. That's baptism and our discipleship, which is Holy Warriors, coming in two weeks. You guys, Wednesday night, Prophet Rob Sanchez. Friday night, 7 o'clock, New Year's Eve service. Don't miss it. Two-hour service, New Year's Eve, 7 to 9. You can enjoy the rest of the night with your family, but put God first, getting ready for 2022. If anybody needs prayer, come on down. You need prayer, come on down. We're here, we're not going anywhere. And then we have a one o'clock service, Spanish, coming up in 15 minutes. God bless you guys. If God is for you, who could come against you? God bless.